Recently, I needed to make a group of checkbox inputs. I wanted multiple checkbox inputs tied to a single control and the value of that control would reflect whatever checkboxes had been selected in that group. So you can see if I select ham and pineapple, that toppings array is going to include ham and pineapple, and that is going to be the value of this input. So I'm using Ionic for that project, which doesn't have the concept of a checkbox group. So I made one myself by using Angular's control value accessor interface. And the end result, is two components, a checkbox group component that will hold the value of all the selected checkboxes and a checkbox component that can render the individual checkbox values. So the cool thing about the control value accessor interface is that we can just use our custom component like a normal form input that Angular understands. You can see that I'm just using a standard form control name here. And this form is tied to a form group called my form. And this is how I'm getting these values that I'm displaying here. I'm just subscribing to the value changes stream for that form. And you can also see if I just refresh this, for example, to clear out these values, I can supply some initial values just like you usually can with Angular forms. So if I just supply an initial value here of cheese and I save that, that is going to be reflected in my custom component when it loads. So if we want Angular to treat some custom component like a regular form control that works with ng model and reactive forms, then it needs to know three things. It needs to know how to update the value of the control. It needs to know when the value has been changed and it needs to know when the input has been touched or interacted with. And if we want, we can also optionally tell Angular when the input is disabled, but this isn't required. So we can do whatever we want with our custom form component, as long as we implement this interface that lets Angular know how to use it. So let's see how this checkbox group component works. So this is the parent checkbox group component, and this is the one that actually implements the control value accessor interface. Now, because we're implementing that interface, this is going to force us to provide the methods necessary for the interface. So you can see what those are exactly in the documentation, but you can also just inspect this interface right here by going to its definition. And if we look through here, we can see that it's expecting a write value method, register on change, register on touched, and also optionally set disabled state. So if I go back to my component now, and if I remove the write value method, it is going to complain because we're not implementing that interface correctly now. And then the other piece of this puzzle is up in our component metadata where we are providing ng value accessor, which is basically a way for us to notify Angular that this component has implemented the control value accessor interface. And it would be ever so great to be able to use this component with your fancy forms. And the reason we are using multi here is because we are essentially extending this ng value accessor token with our own component here rather than overwriting it. Now let's get into the implementation details. So this all might look a little funky, but the interface is reasonably straightforward to implement. So what we are doing is we are storing our array of values that are selected in this value class member here. And you can manage this however you like. How we store this data isn't part of the interface. But we do need to provide a way for Angular to update the value of this control. So that's why we have the write value method, which will allow Angular to pass in a value. And then we are going to do whatever is necessary with that value to reflect it in our custom input. So in this case, all we are going to do is take the value that is passed in and set it up on our value member. And this is why we are able to pass in an array of toppings as a default initial value, because that is going to be received by this write value method. And then it's going to get set up on here. So that is a case of Angular giving something to our component, but we also need to communicate back to Angular when we change the value or when the component is touched. And to do this, Angular will give us these callback functions through the register on change and register on touch methods. So these are both part of the interface and that's going to allow Angular to pass us this function. And then we are storing a reference to both of these functions here 
And what that is going to allow us to do is to call these functions whenever we need to, and that is going to notify Angular that something has happened. So Angular is giving us some functions to call when we need to notify it of something. And these last two methods are just my own custom methods for implementing the functionality of this component. So this toggle value method will add a string to the value array if it's not already in there. So that's how we can add cheese to the array, for example. And if the value is already in the array, then it's going to remove it. Now notice that once I make this change, I am calling the on change callback function we saved to let Angular know that the value has been updated. And we do the same with on touch as well to let Angular know that the control has been interacted with now. Then I also have this is selected method. And this is what the child checkbox components will use to check if their value is currently selected. So this uh, ham, for example, this ham checkbox knows that it is checked because it's checking the is selected in the parent component. And the template for this component is just an ng content, which will allow us to project our child checkbox components into this host component. So that's what we're doing here on the home page. We put these checkboxes inside of the uh, parent checkbox group. And so these checkboxes are going to be projected into this template. So that was the most complex part, but now let's take a look at how the child checkbox components work. So we have an input for the value of the checkbox and also another input for the label that we want to use. So the real trick here is that we are using this host decorator to grab a reference to the parent checkbox group component. So the checkbox group component that these checkboxes are within. So in our case here, that is this component. So if we use that host decorator in this checkbox component, for example, that's going to be able to find out that it is actually within this parent checkbox group. And then we use that reference to interact with the parent group component that we just created. So you can see in the template here that when the checkbox is clicked, we are calling the toggle value method with the value of this particular checkbox. And we are also basing the checkboxes checked state on that is selected method that we implemented. And that's all there is to it. We now have this reusable component that makes it easy to provide a multi-select checkbox group wherever we need it. And the cool thing about the control value accessor interface is that as long as you implement that interface, you can do whatever you like. So this is a pretty standard looking sort of form input but you can create all sorts of wacky things if you want to. A little while ago, I created a form input that allowed you to drag a line up or down to create a smiley face or frowny face of various degrees. And the happiness or sadness of the face would map to a value rating from zero to 100. So this is just a nice way to be able to do whatever you need to do, but in the end, still be able to just create standard form controls. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribe and I will catch you in the next video. 